Amen. Okay, um, we're going to do hymn favorites tonight. So if you have a, a favorite you'd like to sing, Marcia, but we're going to start with At Calvary. I'll take it up there with me. At Calvary. At Calvary. Okay. <coughs> I'll, I'll help you up there and get make sure you get up there. Oh, we are So it just. Yeah, it's all right. You know, the camera we're gonna see okay about, if you're down okay. here we're gonna see you about here okay so i just okay it'd be better for you, you, think, do you think donnie will be watching this pastor donnie oh i'm sure okay. that's what i'll try to do good Yeah, it should. I don't know if it's going to or not. It's called theoretical.
everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in Two forty two. Pull it up there. I heard an old, old story how the Savior came from glory, how he gave the Precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood i heard about his healing of his cleansing power again and he caused the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow jesus came brought to me the victory oh victory my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to 
victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Drink, Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due. Open my eyes that I, I may see. see. <laughs> <laughs> Sixty-five. Do we have that one up there on the? I'm looking. I'm having this on the not short list. Uh, open my eyes that I might see. Yep. Okay. Hopefully that's the right one. Otherwise, it's that one there. Yep. I'm going to keep losing my mic out of my pocket. <laughs> you want me to go back to this mic? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It might go into 15 minutes or so. It might be 15. It's going to be rather brief. So yeah, I'll slow down. Yeah. And we'll make me have another prayer request after that. I will after I get done. Okay. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth. Thou hast for me place in my hand the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy
shall I fear while thou dost lead? Only for light from thee I plead. Ready, my God, my will to see. Ready, my God, thy will to see. <laughs> oh, is that, okay. I'll tell you, Mike, you're a tough act to follow. I'd like to welcome everybody. I've been having a little trouble with my balance. I'm doing pretty good, so I got a stool here. So if you see me sit down and be. Uh, the reason, but I'm going to try to stay upright. Uh, I think all of you know me here. I, I don't see any fam unfamiliar faces. I see a lady I haven't seen for a while, Fabia. Fabia, we're sure glad to see you. And uh, I'm glad that the rest of you folks come out tonight. Uh, about 30 years ago, I had a chance to fill in for a pastor at a Methodist church out in Green River, Illinois. I don't know if any of you have been there. It's just outside of Kelowna. And, uh, he asked me, trusted me to fill in, and I, my sermons weren't very long. In fact, I promise you tonight it won't be long. I, I hope the substance is better than the actual length. But uh, I used to tell the folks out there, don't worry about it. If you got a pot roast on slow boil, uh, it won't keep you long. You'll be home in time before it spoils. So, <laughs> uh, You know my wife, Marcia, too. She's been my biggest backer all these years, and uh, she stood behind me through you know everything and encourage me. Uh, tonight, the topic I'm going to be talking about is hope. And I think that, uh, you know, we need more hope in this world. I was over at eye surgeons with Marcia today. I was in the waiting room, and they had the TV on. I'll tell you, it was nothing but bad news, you know. And uh, it, it don't take much to make you despondent, but uh, the, I think the bottom line is we know the Lord is with us. And I feel sorry for those that don't have this background, you know, because it's so essential. So anyway, uh, some thoughts to share with you folks. Uh, like I say, I'm going to be talking on hope. And you know, every day I ask the Lord to make me a blessing to someone in the form of maybe bringing hope to somebody. And I talk to Pastor Donnie. I have coffee with him every week or so. I'll stop up. And I told him about this. And I said, the thing is, when you pr have this prayer, you better be ready because you don't know the blessings may come and the requests may come unexpectedly. You know, if you pray, you're going to be a blessing. It might be some time when you aren't planning on going somewhere or doing something, and you may have to go a little bit out of your way, but if you can bring a little hope to somebody, I mean, it can mean a lot. I'll mention a couple examples. Oh, four or five months ago, I took my niece and her son to uh, the gastroenterologist over there. He had an appointment. And I was in the waiting room, and there was a lady sitting behind me and I turned her, you know, asked her how she doing. I could see she was somewhat despondent and she proceeded to tell me there was some problems, her family medical problems and, you know, it was really weighing on her real heavy and I told her I'd keep her in my prayer and Marsha in my prayers and it seemed to lift her spirits up and I really think that as believers we have an obligation to reach out to those, even strangers, if we have an opportunity without being forceful. You know, I see so many cases as I go through life that there's opportunities an awful lot. And we just got to kind of be aware and be ready for these opportunities that come along. Oh, let me look at my notes. I'll have to refer to these a little bit. Uh, 
Anyway, uh, I promised I wouldn't be too brief tonight. I'm trying to have a little substance here. I didn't want to make it too short, but uh, later on, if anybody wants to share some ideas and thoughts in their, of their personal experiences, I welcome that. And then uh, we'll have some time for prayer here near the end too. So uh, I got to mention the other day, a couple days ago, <clears throat> Marcia and I were at Walmart and she had got some groceries and I went my separate way and I had one item is all. And I went up to check out and there was a fellow right ahead of me, a young fellow, he had a whole basket full of groceries. And I thought, well, you know, I wait my turn. And he said, come on up here, you know, come on ahead. <clears throat> and I thanked him and I wasn't feeling down that day, but a little act by his kindness made me feel a little bit better. And I thanked him. I said, you know, I really commend you for this. He said, well, Mama, Mama raised me well. I said, I certainly can see that. And uh, there again, I, I think that we should try to pass that on to people. You know, we're living in a world that there's a lot of hurt in the world. And a lot of times people are just crying out, maybe not vocally, but internally for help. And I think that we have an obligation, like you say, to, to help others in need. There's so many things going on out there. Oh, I, I was thinking of a story, <clears throat> and I try not to keep them too corny, you know, but, uh, and it's appropriate for this audience, but there was a fella walking through a park, a young fella, and this guy had an aversion to work. You know, he didn't really care much for work. He, was, he lived with relatives, and he liked to mooch money here and there, and he proceeded through the park, and there was, he saw an elderly gentleman sitting on the park bench, and he thought, this guy looks like a really good mark. He said, I think maybe I can get a little bit of money out of him. So he went up, he said, sir, he says, I just been hoping and I've been praying that I can get a little money. Could you, you know, give me 20 or if you don't have 20, I'll even take 10. So the older gentleman sat there and he pondered it for about a minute. He said, I'll tell you what, young fella. He said, about two blocks down the street, you go down and turn the corner, I got a grocery store I own. I'm just up here on my lunch hour. If you come tomorrow morning about nine o'clock, I can, uh, I can put you to work. It won't be too hard to stock on shelves. It'll be an answer to your hopes and your prayers. And the old, older fella, he looked, he'd been looking down, he looked up, and all of a sudden, all he saw was the back of the guy beating it out of the park. So, <laughs> and you know, such situations such as that, you know, hope for things like that that aren't practical, you know, really. And I can remember as a kid at Christmas, my folks, my dad worked for International Harvester, and we had to, you know, he had made a good living but they weren't wealthy, there was four of us kids. And you know, it's only natural when you're 10, 11, whatever, come Christmas time, you get some pretty high, you know, hopes for some nice toys, but whatever it was, we knew that it probably wouldn't be quite that much, you know. And I can think back when I was about in seventh grade, I, you know, we have a math test coming, and I was a fair student. And in fact, English literature and History and geography were two of my better subjects in art, but math, oh, I'll tell you, I was pretty poor in math. So you'd hear a couple of girls saying to each other, and these girls were, you know, really bright. The girls were usually the brightest ones in the class. And I think in a lot of cases they are now, I have to give them credit for that. <laughs> anyway, you might hear one girl say to another, gosh, I sure wish I could get an A, and the other one say, oh, I, I wish I could do. I'd be thinking to myself, boy, I just hope I can pass this test. I'd be well satisfied. <laughs> But anyway, uh, this little instances like that you think about as you go through life. And I, I don't know, there's so many, like you say, opportunities to help others. Uh, is there any comments now? I'll give people a chance. Did anybody want to interject some thoughts in here to kind of help supplement this tonight? Because like I say, I thought it, I'd be able to take longer than this, but uh, I, I want to at this time maybe t step a little bit out. And I want to thank the folks that make our church a place of hope, you know. And uh, I might mention Rick, you know, Rick from Davenport. I call him Rick the Joker, you know. He's quite a guy, the guy that wears shorts. And he told me, he has his serious moments, and he shared this with me just recently. He said, you know, from the moment I came to this church, I knew I was home, the spiritual home. And he was totally serious. And I think that a lot of people come here, they're looking for hope, and I'll tell you, if they can't find it here, I don't know where they would because Marsh and I have been parts of other churches. They were pretty good, some not quite as good as others, but uh, when we came here, we knew we weren't gonna look any further. We've been going here 11 years now. It was 11 years in July, so. And it's just been such a great thing here. I pray for Pastor Donnie and Becky regularly and all the work here, part of our pantry. 
And you know, the pantry is really important. That brings a lot of hope to people too. I gotta mention another instance. About a week and a half ago, I was out here in the lot. I'd stopped by to see Donnie and was by my car and a couple pulled up in the convertible. And the guy would sit there, he said he was from Florida. His mother lived around here and she'd given him this car. And he said he worked construction. I don't think he was employed at the time. And I noticed he had a fishing rod sticking out of the back of his car there. Well, that's all it took to get me interested because I think you that know me know I'm an avid fisherman. In fact, I'm wearing a shirt from one of the companies I represent. But anyway, uh, I said, I see you're a fisherman. Yeah, he said I, he likes to fish for walleyes in the river. And we got to talking. I said, I think I got something I can help you with. Well, I had my older car that I used for fish, and I opened the trunk. I got four or five rods in there, which I wasn't going to give those away, but got a lot of tackle and a lot of odds and ends. I said, I'll tell you what, I got a few things here that might help you in your fishing. You know, he thanked me. He said, oh, you're awesome. You're, I said, no, I'm not awesome. I'm still, it's a work in progress, whatever. But uh, I kind of felt like that had been the kind of answer to, you know, reaching out to somebody. And I didn't expect something like that, but very, very nice fellow. He shook hands with me, and I, I told him the pantry days, what they were. It was coming up like on a Wednesday and a Friday or Saturday, so there's another example there. Like I say, you never know when these things are going to occur, so does anybody, help me out here, folks, does anybody want to share us some thoughts or something on some things, because so help kind of augment the program here a little bit. Don't feel bashful. Oh, you uh, you're speaking about Whole Foods. I'm in that pantry you know, twice a week, and then I do a lot of other, you know, behind the scenes. And when somebody comes up to me and you see that they have, they're in a hopeless situation, you know, and it just gives me a good feeling that I'm helping them, that person out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not me, I'm not helping them out. I mean, this. This food is, you know, given us. I don't pay a penny for this food, but uh, to give them, to be able to help somebody just in a hopeless, I see it, I see it every day out there, you know. So when you're talking about hope and that pantry is a source of hope for a lot of people. Absolutely. And it's just a marvel. Know that there was so much hopelessness until I started working there because I've always been well fed. I've never been had to go do without. And there was a lady that come in yesterday, and I just happened to be down here, and I had to give. Uh, I had to do something anyway. I came down and I did what I had to do, and me and my boy was gonna uh, go and get a door. So I hated to be bothered by it, but I said, uh, they said, you know, we're open on Wednesday and uh, Saturday, but I always ask, do you have anything, do you need something like that? Oh yes, I do. And so there was what was gonna, was she not going to eat? Her kids were not going to eat tonight, today, because, so that's why when I close the pantry, if somebody comes late, yeah, it's an inconvenience, but I can make, I can be inconvenient for the next several minutes to help this person out, because I see it all the time. They don't have nothing. So when i able to help in that situation. You know, that's nice, Mike. That's what you Right. I, you know, it, like I say, it, there's no hard and set rules. Past, I know we've had some people that volunteer in the pantry. Their intentions are good, but someone may pull up just a few minutes late or whatever. Nope, we're closed. Yeah. Well, there was a fella and his wife stopped here about six weeks ago. He worked for Deer when I was there, and I think he's not doing bad, but they needed a few things. His name's Louie. And I said, come on down. I took him down. And uh, I guess they'd been down there already and were Turned back, I said, no, come on down. And they just got a few bread items. There was an abundance. But little things like that make a difference. You know, that's kind of the hallmark in the, which I see what our church is known for. And a lot of churches are missing out because they, they, 
Well, I know there's churches, I don't want to run down any denominations, but there's churches that look down their nose, so to speak, at some of the lesser folks in society that don't have much. Right. In my opinion, I don't care what, who they are, what they are, they miss the whole message. And I told my friend Ted recently, I've told others, that's what it's all about. And right here, this is putting in practice the Lord's work. And we're sure proud that we can be a part of it in a little way. We thank all those who are really actively participating. So anyway, I got a, a few Bible verses here for I, before I close. <coughs> and uh, there's numerous Bible verses in the Bible pertaining to hope. But uh, the first one is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. And our hope, our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as we are partakers of all the sufferings, Shall shall ye wake, so shall you be also of the consolation. And the next one is from Psalm chapter 16, verse 9. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoicing re rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. And the uh, next one, the third one is Psalm 39, verse 7. And you, Lord... Who, who wait for who wait for who shall I wait who excuse me and now Lord what wait I for my hope is in thee and the last one is Acts 26 verse 6 and now I stand am judge for the hope of the promise made of God unto our father so anything else folks here and Marcia do you have something to add and Thank you. There's a certain hymn that's Jesus never fails, heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus never fails. That's, yes, yes, absolutely. No, no. Yeah. That's right. You know, I feel sorry for folks that haven't received this blessing, you know, and there's so many out there, it's so simple, but I guess that could be another prayer for all of us to more could be led to the Lord, discover the joys of following, you know, too. So, uh, Mike, do you want to have some prayer and then we'll have another? Do you want to do my number first? Oh, go ahead, Laura. Yes, yes. Yeah. I. It's a way of life. There was a doctor, is a doctor of psychiatry on. And, that's right. Yeah. There was, yeah. There was a psychiatrist. Excuse me. A psychiatrist on this morning, and he mentioned that that the bitterness and hatred. You know, he was being practical from not a psychological standpoint, but it's an observation of his. Marsh and I see this in the traffic. It's me first, you know, and the, the pace is so much different than it was just a few years ago. Is it like we saying it's a dog eat dog world out there? And sometimes I, we just have to pull back and, you know, see what's going on, and we don't want to be part of that. We don't want to be drug into this, so we pray that we'll have the patience and what it takes to withstand this, so.
Well, th thanks, thanks for sharing uh, that and all of you that did share. So uh, I'm going to do a number. Do you want to have some prayer and then we'll do the number and then we'll close? Yeah, we'll, right. we'll go ahead and do, uh, we're gonna do some time prayer. Just go ahead and then we'll do a number after that. Yeah. Okay. So. Anybody's got any prayer requests? I uh, like to have, uh, uh, take a short time on Monday night and pray. Um, Walt, if you're listening, I want to pray for you. Walt uh, is trying to, I think you were feeling a little bit blue. Uh, as of late, he said that uh, you probably won't be coming very much longer because it's already harder and harder. And, and uh, he get up, you know, and he, I witness it every day. So I mean, when I go pick him up, he's having a hard time. Uh, mobility and that, and then the uh, his eyes isn't, isn't like they was, and he can't see the screen. So he's thinking. Uh, I think that maybe you know, uh, maybe he even mentioned I don't think I'll be coming maybe six to twelve months longer. But so pray for Walt. And, you know, lift his spirit. Give us some hope because it's, uh, you know, he's 87, but he's not dead yet. He's still here, so he's, God's got a reason for it. And it's here, so. uh, and he does, he's been doing this for years now. So uh, give, uh, keep walking and pray. Anybody else? surgery, but I, it wasn't, I think it was like a knee, so it wasn't a major heart surgery or anything like that, I think it was like a, uh, I think it was a knee if I remember right, uh, she, her daughter in prayer and uh, is there anybody else? want to thank you for this uh, message that we received tonight from you through your servant Don. It was a great message, Lord, and we all need hope, and I think that was just so appropriate topic tonight that you led Don to speak about, and we're thankful for that, and Lord, we just need hope in this hopeless situation, Lord, I see this, like I, I mentioned, I see it in the pantry and people in really hopeless situations and I'm just thankful that you'll put me in the position to make, to be a blessing to those people out there, Lord, and, and uh, just continue praying for them people that are needy, Lord, you know all their needs and all the things that they need and, uh, you 
you've got everything in control, Lord, and we're thankful for that. And Lord, I just want to uh, lift up to you today, Lord, uh, Walt, who having a tough, tough time mobility-wise, Lord, and tough time with his eyes being able to see, Lord, and these things are not too hard for you, Lord. You can uh, help him to see better. You can help him his uh, mobility to be, to do better, Lord. It just, uh, the weather sometimes takes him down a, a, a cold front or a warm front that goes by, Lord, and he he's not uh, able to move as well, Lord. You know all about those days, Lord. Just be with him during those times that he can uh, uh, be able to move better and uh, Lord, for his uh, arthritis, that that would subside, Lord. And so we're leaving that in your hands, Lord. And then his eyesight as well. Lord, I lift up to you, uh, Ida's daughter. You know that situation, Lord, too. And uh, take care of uh, Bring healing to, the, to her, Lord. Refresh, renew her, and... Uh, and uh, bring her back to be, being able to do what she needs to do. And Lord, I mentioned my brother to you often, Lord, who had this stroke, and Lord, uh, just bring him back uh, 100% because we know that you're more than able to do that. And Lord, there's one that here that needs a special touch, Lord, you know all about it, Lord. So touch that person even tonight, Lord. And, uh, Lord, there's some in our congregation that are maybe going through a, a financial uh, situation, Lord. Provide for that person. You own the cattle on a thousand hills, Lord. So take care of that, Lord. And there's others that... Uh, well, you, like I say, you know about them all, Lord. So take care of our situation, Lord, and, and touch us in a special way. And bless us the rest of this night as we close. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Don's got a number that he Janice, has. do you and Myrna want to join me up here? I'd be honored if you would. Do uh, you want to take a collection, Mike? Donnie usually does. Yeah. Or? Yeah. And then we can go ahead and... Anywhere you want to stand, I'll stay out of the way. Thank you for joining me. We're going to do a good old favorite. Closer walk. Right. Laura, let's do all three verses and if you don't, okay.
Or do you, Mike? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. And, uh, Are we ready to pray, close? Or? Yeah, pray for Donnie and Mexico okay. return. Um, I mm. think they won't be back until the 10th, they said, I think, wasn't it? August 10th? Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us through another service. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for all those that come out and for please bless us and all those that couldn't be here. Please be with Pastor Donnie. And Becky, and may his prognosis be well for the procedure or the uh, whatever he's facing. Thank you for another day in our lives, dear Lord, and we're looking forward to another good day tomorrow. We know with you that we can expect help when we need it. So thanks again for your many blessings. Please be with each one of us and guide us. We go back to our homes. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for your assistance. Appreciate it.